We are Hi, live. Everyone. Hi everyone, Lupi Voss here. I'm excited to share a short haired technique. Um, we do a lot of long hair in the salon right now, and there are some clients that do come in that have shorter hair. It's not quite a pixie, it's short hair. So these are some ideas that I will share with you today. That's a fun technique. We have it in a fashion form, and then I'm going to show you how to translate this fashion form into a consumer friendly technique. So if we could have our inspiration image up first. So this is Lav. Lav is a shoot that we've done. Color Space Hair is my company and I have an amazing partner, Ray Chavello. We started Color Space Hair January 11th. We did this amazing photo shoot and this is Lav. Lav has a very short pixie cut. Now, I don't know, I'm not sure if you all know who Peter Gray is. Peter Gray did the haircut on these. He also did the haircut on these and shipped them to me. So shout out to Peter Gray. And what we did with Lav is we really looked at her haircut. So Luis Gonzalez, at, um, his Instagram is Luis Gonzalez Hair on Instagram. Check him out, he's amazing. He and I worked together on Lav's hair. When we did a consultation with Lav, they wanted to make sure that their hair was cool, funky, and fresh. So what we did with Peter's cut is we read the haircut, which I'm going to do with you. Then we did some really fun tipping pieces. So while I'm describing the haircut to you, because I'm going to teach you first how to read the haircut, because this technique is really working with the tips of the hair. So we're gonna look about uh, out how to read the haircut and where to place this um, color. This is what we did. I pre-did most of this mannequin so that you all could see what it is. So for those of you who are just joining in, this is what we're doing today. We are doing a really fresh, funky um, tipping technique on this asymmetric cut. And if you look at the haircut, because this is really about the haircut as well, when we color for short hair, we have a really short undercut. And this haircut again was done with by Peter Gray. Let me lift this up so you can see what the back is doing. He worked in very sharp um, angles and everything about this is angular. You can see how these pieces are angular and it's really about the haircut. This is the one thing. Long hair, you would subsection out and color it for the length. There's a certain subsection that will work, which is perfect. If you've seen any of my tutorials, I'll, it's the same sectioning. This, when it's anything that's cut chin length and above, you have to um, color it for its shape. And that's what we're doing today. So what we did here in with Lav, when they when we interviewed um, interview, when we consulted with Lav, they wanted something that was different and something that was fresh. So sitting there, we we went ahead and gave Lav the denim type of a color, but then we thought, what can we do to make them look a little bit more funkier? So what we did is we did these tipping pieces, and I'm going to demonstrate that for you. And again, I will demonstrate it into a very commercial form. First, I'm gonna mix our color. Our formula today, Color Space Hair, we are using zero ammonia-free permanent color and we're using one level one. So normally we mix our color one to one and a half, but today we're gonna to mix one to one because we want it deeper, darker, more matte, and a little bit more deposit. So we'll use our five volume, cream liquid activate, and I'm going to mix it in a very special machine. Let me show you this. So while I get that going, this is the Unimix. We have a temperature button here. So we're gonna put that on and then we're gonna mix. Oh, I forgot to put our magnet. This is what's really cool about it. After we measure out our product, we drop our magnet in and then turn on the machine. So while it's mixing, I'm gonna describe our subsectioning and what we do. So this is what the machine is doing. It's mixing up the color for me while I go back to my mannequin. Here we go. So earlier I talked about how we are going to color her hair. This is what we need to do. So I was watching Peter cut this haircut and it was pretty amazing. What he would do is he would take his partings and he would over direct them let me turn so you can get a front view of this. So he would over direct them. You can see where your haircut is team. If you pull this directly out from where it grows, you can see the line that it was cut. You can see that line that it was cut right there. Let me drop my fingers down a little bit. He went in and really textured it, but you can see that line where it was cut. 
So what he was doing was taking this section, he took his parting to cut and he over-directed it away from where he was, where it would land. So I was watching what he was doing as he was moving and cutting. And that gave me an idea. Also what gave me an idea was he was working in big wide, um, not big wide triangles, but in triangles. So I took triangles around this head and again, I'll go sideways so you can see the profile. And this is me cutting for the haircut. I took wide triangles. You can see the front is here. And as we get to the top, it comes to a point. I would over direct this over until this became flat. That told me this is where his fingers were when he cut it. So my, my idea, ready? This is what I'm thinking. Everybody knows what happens when you over direct hair. When you make it move from where it's growing and if you cut it or color it at that place, it's over directed. So the hair that's coming directly from the head at a 90, think about hair cutting. I'm gonna take you into hair cutting through color. This is being pulled out at a 90. It's gonna get the most color. As hair starts to travel, the further it's traveling away, let me turn her so you can get a really front view here. As the hair is traveling away, so here we go. We're gonna get the most color with the hair that's like so, and all the hair that's traveling this way or this way into that triangle is gonna get less. And this is the effect that you get, team. This is what you get. You get the hair that, I'm gonna comb it down so you can see. You get the hair that kind of looks like fur. It kind of gives that effect of a shadowy, and you can see on the interior. All right, so let's do this. So this is the technique. So once I take my triangle, I find out where it was combed. Once I like where I see it was cut, everything was combed to here and then cut. Again, Peter Gray, thank you very much for these mannequins. What I do is I clip it to hold it in place. So then now I'll do this one. So I went through the whole head. Let me take this down. And this is a lot of fun to, to do it into a, a commercial color. Okay, again, I'm combing, I'm looking to see where this was cut and it was pulled back to there. So I can read this haircut. This is how you read a haircut. You keep combing, pull it out at a 90 and look at what the design of the haircut is telling you. If you see it go flat in your fingers, meaning it goes like so, when it goes flat like this, that, that means you know that you've that's where you found where the haircut happened or where you where you actually cut it. So once these sections are done, what I'm going to do, it's super fast. It probably, I think it took me longer to get the fashion color on there. So the fashion color, what we used is Color Space. Color Space Zero Ammonia Free. It's an ammonia free color. We used 10 grams of clear and I'll have these formulas written out for you as well. We use 10 grams of clear, 20 grams of blue, and 20 grams of violet. And that was the fashion color, shampooed that out, and then we, I went through and I did these um, little pieces through it. Okay, so now I know this is where all the hair got um, pulled back to, and I've clipped it to keep it in place. I have over direction. I know that the middle piece is going to get the most color. Everything that's being drug into that center is going to get less because we're over directing. Now, there is a lot of texture in there. So I'm going to go deeper than the texture so that you can see the color probably one inch. So from here to here, I'll grab my foil, comb it down. Again, so this is mixed equal parts. This is Color Space Zero Ammonia Free. And we love using that Unimix hair color mixer because it gives me time. What do you, it takes two minutes to mix the color. And what's really cool about it is that it heats up the color body temp. So it helps with any reactions to um, hair color. All right, so now if you notice, I don't paint a straight line. So I apply my color with my brush flat to the hair. I'll flip my brush vertically and then I'll move it back and forth. Now team, this is a super creative way of, this is a funky type of a color. I'm going to show you how to make this more commercial. All right, so I'm gonna pull this down, fold it up. 
I'll fold it up again. Now, I wanna make sure I lock this foil in so it doesn't move around. So I'll push this flat down with the teeth of my comb, I'll hold it and I'll roll that corner up. So that's gonna keep that foil from sliding around because next, I'll do the same thing. Drop these down. Oops, let me put that back on. I meant to take this one off. Okay, we've got this held in place. Now again, this is straight up and everything is being directed towards the center. That means that that's not gonna be as deep as the center. That's where we get the variation in color. You can push these clips down with the teeth of your comb if they're in your way. All right, okay, this is what my eye is doing. I, I know where it was cut. I see where all the texture lives. And then I'm gonna go one inch below that. Because if you don't team, what's gonna happen is you're barely gonna see it, but it doesn't mean that, it, maybe that's what you want. You just want barely a shadow of it. And it doesn't have to be black. I chose black so that you could see it and I wanted to really show you what we did with Lav. All right, so I'm gonna take this color. Here we go. And again, we're using 1.0 mixed equal parts with five volume cream activate. And it's super creamy. This is, um, our developer has shea butter in it. So it, it moves really quickly through the hair and it's super soft. Again, I'll pick up my product, apply it with my brush flat to the hair, and then I'll put my brush vertically and I'll roll it back and forth just to get it nice and saturated. Here we go. All right. So reading a haircut for short hair, super important. Of course, yes, we can go through and do our regular sectioning. Sometimes we get I get bored. I get bored doing the same type of sectioning all the time. And I know that we're doing a lot of long hair. So for those of you who do have at least a couple of clients that come in, okay, again, I'm locking this foil, put my flap, stick my the teeth of my comb into my palm and roll that up. That's gonna keep it from sliding down. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna let her process. And then later on today, when we're done with all of these, we're gonna take some pictures and send them on your way. Again, this is the effect that you get. You get the tipped effect of that little, um, the blurred lines. And the more you comb through it and the more you make it messy, the, I, I think it looks more interesting. And Lav, her, what, they, what they did with their hair is, they would um, wear it really wet and slick sometimes, and it was a really cool effect. So this is the effect that you'll get on the hair. All right, so now let's do this in a more commercial. So let me move all of this out of the way. So we have, I do wanna show you the haircut. Again, shout out to Peter Gray for these haircuts. He's an amazing, editorial artist if you haven't ever got to see his work peter gray hair on instagram what he did is he did an undercut and this is a really fun thing because you could tuck this you can pull this up i'm going to try and do he's going to give me a little tutorials of different ways to style this today he's actually in iceland all right so you can see this is the inspiration of the work you can see how all of these um deep v's happened here we go. You can see how all of these deep V's happened. And then we have more of an asymmetrical side where there's hair on this side. So you can see she has some type of dimension in her hair, but we're gonna do more. So the first thing we will do is comb through, get all of the hair nice and smooth. I wanted to leave the texture so you could see the texture. And then we're gonna comb through the whole head, knowing we are gonna work in the same patterns because this is the thing. Look at how the shape lands. If it lands, if you, if you have any, if you're questioning how can I get creative with some of these placements, think about what you see. If you see triangles, then work in triangles. So here I see a triangle. So I'm going to take it, I'm gonna work in a pivot. So this is gonna be one triangle here. So I'll just take and put this in one triangle. Next. I'm gonna look here, comb the hair. What is it telling me what it's doing? Okay, we've got another triangle. So I'll just take this and then to another triangle. So this is really telling me what I wanna do. It's giving me idea. If these are falling into triangles, I'm going to work in a triangle. If you were horizontal in a triangle, you'll, you'll lose the shape. Sometimes, I don't know if you've ever done short hair and when you're finished, you're like, mm, it's all right. And it doesn't mean like, 
age doesn't matter. If you were to do this haircut on someone, they could still create this with blonde. And that's what we're doing today. All right, so here we go. Here's a triangle. I'm gonna take another triangle here. And this is just an idea of what we're going to do. So I am just working in subsection. This is like you going into the, going in and doing a full foil subsection. That's all I'm doing right now. Getting an idea of what the haircut is telling me to do. So this is what I see the haircut telling me what to do. And again, we're working for a short pixie cut. Well, not really a pixie, it's a short haircut, I should say. And we're getting a really commercial look out of using the same technique. Okay, here we have this. So this is a triangle. It's like the, rever the reverse of all the other triangles. So here we go. That's gonna be our last section here. So what I am going to use now is our silver powder lightener. This is our beautiful powder lightener. This um, silver powder lightener, and I like to mix this as if I was folding in, um, as, I, as if I was baking. So I just, into the liquid, I'll put the silver powder lightener and then I just keep mixing a little by little. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about the chemistry of it and why. Powder lighteners, this is what's really interesting. You get the lift from the powder, not the developer. And when we mix our powder lighteners, for some reason we've missed how the chemistry works. If you were to mix, we, we always teach everyone, just put your powder in, put your developer in and measure it up and you're good. I want, I want, to, put, I want to tell you guys something. I want to challenge you guys to do this. Measure your liquid and then fold in your powder little by little. And I'm, it doesn't take that much time. I want you to see the difference of the texture. Our, well, this is what's beautiful about the Color Space Powder Lightener. This is silver um, powder lightener. It gives you up to nine levels of lift and the creaminess of it is so beautiful. And what I like about it is that you can change the textures by the different ways you mix our powder lightener. One, you can mix it this way. I like to mix it with the brush or with the spatula. Second, you can put it on the Unimix, the machine that I just showed you. And I think I'll mix the um, our freehand powder lightener next with it. Okay, so you can see what's happening here. It's getting thicker. All right, and then our last. And then the last way you can mix it is with your spatula. So, or I'm so sorry, your whisk. So it gives you three different types of finish. When I'm working in my foil, I love to use the brush to get it mixed up. Here we go. So our silver powder lightener and our freehand powder lightener is what I'm going to be using to make this look more commercial. Okay, you hey, can Lupe. See. Yes. Hey, this is Heather from BTC. Hi. I just wanted to remind everybody that I am here asking all of your questions. So make sure you're commenting and asking questions, get those answered. But we did have a couple. Um, Jennifer wanted to know, are you using a metal bowl? I am. Thank you, Jennifer. I am. These are um, stainless steel. They're, they're um, treated so that we can use them. They're not a metal. It's not like a regular metal bowl. This one is a stainless steel bowl. They're acid wash. They belong to that. They go with the Unimix. And I'll, there's a there's a couple of things while I'm working. I'll talk to you about. They're safe because they have been treated and they are um, safe to heat up to the body temperature. And that's what the machine does. So these are stainless steel bowls that are safe to use. And let me do this real quick. And then I'm going to talk to you more about it. So I'm going to start working in these triangles as I'm working back. In between these foils, what I want to do is hair paint. So I'm going to add dimension to it. Again, we're working in these triangles because that's what the haircut is telling us. So what I'll do is instead of creating a, a really harsh line like what we did on our um, fashion color, I'm going to split this in half. The, le the smaller the triangles, the um, more dimension you're going to see. And that's what I want to do. Okay, Heather. So um, that question about the bowls. We have an opportunity 
to really think about what we're working in. And why I'm saying this is plastic, you know, for the longest time I taught how to um, mix color and powder lighteners. And I would do it with um, plastic. And so we had a whisk, a metal whisk, and what I was doing is mixing, 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 mixing. Okay, team, picture this. So you've got a fresh, brand new bowl. It's so nice and shiny, and it has a beautiful, um, shine, shiny coating on it. And little by little, as you start to mix in that bowl, you can see it starts to get scarred, and you can see how it's not as shiny anymore, and then it starts to get stained. Well, what happens is we're scraping, as we're mixing, tiny microplastic fibers, and it's going into the ocean. And it is, <laughs> it's really weird. There was an article about, I don't wanna be a Debbie Downer, it's gonna sound such like a Debbie Downer situation, but they're finding microfiber plastics in placenta and in babies that are the, the in the, it's kind of like sad. So this is my thing, team. This is what I want you to do. I want you to stop using plastics and mixing in plastics because what's happening is we're getting these microfiber plastics that we're washing into the ocean. And that's one of the reasons why I like this metal bowl. You can use glass bowls, but the Unimix is pretty amazing. Okay, so again, I over-directed it back. Now I'm just grabbing the tip. I'm making sure that I'm doing the same technique here. What I'm doing, I'm outlining that triangle. I'm taking little zigzags out and I'll demonstrate that right now. So then we're pulling these down. And these, you guys, are the tips. These are just the tips, but I'm going deep. Remember, I'll go one inch deep after the texture happens. Hey, Lisa. Hey, so yes. We did have another question from Steph I wanted to get in here and ask. Um, she was referencing the black tips that you did on the original mannequin, and she wanted to know when you're working with darker colors like black, how do you prevent the dark color from bleeding? From bleeding when you're rinsing it or bleeding when you're applying it? There's rinsing it. Um, I do foil by foil, and I will tell you what I do um, as, uh, which is really a kind of cool thing. So let me grab it. There is a spray that we have, and I don't know if you can grab this shot manual. Um, this is Stop. This is Stop Liquid Spray, and I'll spray it outside of the product. You can see how it sprays. This stops all the chemical action from happening. So every time I'll pull a foil, I'll put a towel under it, I'll spray this on the product, and it stops it from working. So when I'm rinsing, it won't get onto the other hair. So this helps me. Another way that I do is while she's laying back, um, I will make sure that the, um, I'll make sure that it's just one foil at a time and the first rinse is cooler. It's not hot, it's cooler. Cause I don't want the rest of the hair to get so hot that it starts to open up the cuticles. It's cool, it's on the cold side. Okay, so here's my triangle. I did zigzags on either side of the triangle and these hair, this hair that's in between, I am going to paint. So I'm going to just keep working as we do this. So um, for the fashion formula, what's really cool is there, the, what the stop does is it keeps it from gliding onto the rest of the hair. Okay, so here, so it takes all the power. It has an ingredient called manganese gluconate. And what's cool about that product is, and the other day, I, I, um, I'm i actually going to post a picture on my Instagram. I did one of my friend's hair for her birthday yesterday, and the front of her foils were finished. So all I have to do is put stop on the front foils and then let the back process. We so did have a question about stop. Um, Somebody in the comments wants to know where they can purchase it. And is it universal to all color lines? It is universal to all color lines. All, what STOP does, it has an ingredient called manganese gluconate. And what manganese gluconate does is it goes into the hair and it, it um, accelerates the working power of your developer. So it stops all of the process of the hair of the product. It's pretty cool. You can get on um, color space. It's www. And if the team could put that in the feed, www. 
colorspacehair.com. I just sounded really old, didn't I? I just did the www. Yeah, I did, didn't I? I'm sorry. Okay, so we're going to lock this foil. Roll this up. Again, go to colorspacehair.com. There are no Ws. And this is the hair that's in between that particular triangle. Let's go here. And you guys, you can see it's not, it's, it's more organic. You don't want it to look like it's, I, I get so tired of seeing the regular, you know, like the foils or the foils or the foils. This gives you a little shadow root. This is like a shadow root, a grown out look for your short hair people. Okay, so then we're gonna take a zigzag. Get and that out of the way. Uh, we have a question from Steph. She wants to know, why do you feather the lightener past the textured ends? So if I don't, great question, thank you. Um, if I don't, what'll happen is, it'll be see-through and you won't really see it. It'll look too fine. And it happened to me when I was doing um, our mannequin last night. And I, it was like one of, I, it was the biggest aha that I completely forgot about. So I was like, I'm going to make sure today that the team knows that if you don't go deep enough, these fine pieces that are all textured out right here, if you, you'll barely see the color. But if you only want to barely see the color, then you would only put it on those textured tips. I want to go a little bit deeper. And the thing is, you can go back and point cut some of these out if they're too much. But if it's not enough, you're going to have to go back and recolor it. So I would rather cut it out and give it more texture. Okay, so here we go. Let me lay this down. I would rather cut it out with more texture than have to go back and reapply because she can't see the highlight. Okay, so then here we go. I'm gonna apply with my brush flat. So this silver powder lightener is so beautiful. It has a violet blue um, action to it. And it, sometimes you don't even have to gloss with it because it, it contributes to the end result. Here we go. Let me roll this back and forth. I roll back and forth to make sure that there's a lot of saturation in there. And again, you can see I know where the haircut is because that's flat to the foil. Okay. All right, we do have another question and it is, how would you approach this placement if there wasn't a soft undercut longer in the nape? I would do, I would split this in half, address this um, above the occipital, and then I would address below the occipital. And below the occipital, I think when, one thing that I really think I, I think is so pretty is tipping. And that's the back combing techniques that you can just pull it straight out at a diagonal, back comb it, and then just do the tips. So that would how I would address. If there was anything that was longer, even like a mullet-esque type of a cut, I would, I would address it that way. These, I would definitely do vertical like how I'm doing now. Her head, if you noticed how I keep moving her around, her head, it's, this is a client participation hair color. So she's got she's to gotta move with us if she wants this to come out great. And it's hard because we have to be really good to our body. So I would say, okay, chin down and then ear to your left side. Okay, and I'll have her stay there because it doesn't take us that long to get it. So now I'm gonna zigzag around that triangle, just because I know I'm gonna hair paint some tiny pieces in there. Take it closer. Okay, move this. All oh. right, we have a question from Dinelle. She wants to know, what are the benefits to using silver powder lightener? I do, well, our silver, Color Space Silver Powder Lightener will give you nine levels of lift, which I think is amazing. It contributes to that yellow reflection of that NRP at a level nine. Even at an eight, you can get an orange yellow. You, it, it really helps control that. But at a 10, a pale yellow, a nine, I would say a 10, pale yellow, it is absolutely beautiful. It really gives you a beautiful, beautiful finish. I find that I don't have to gloss because it is it, con it controls the natural remaining pigment that much. It contributes. I don't want to say controls because that means that like a gloss would, but it really controls it. And I love the lift. It's so even. And our, the, the one thing that I really love, and you'll see it in a lot of the products that um, we have, because I am a huge shea butter fan. I think shea butter on the hair is amazing. Our um, activates cream activators have um, 
shea butter in them. So you can see how easy it is to glide through the hair. But it can be heavy, so you don't need to use as much product. Okay, so I'm going to slide this back up. I can see I went a little deep there. I think that's fine. I think I'm going to like that. Okay, there, there. Fold it, lock it. And then let's move on. That lock helps keep these foils from sliding. And you can see the shadow that's happening at the root as we move around the head. Okay. So let's do this one. Now we're on our last, believe it or not, we're on our last little triangle. You can see how fast this is. Okay, so let's take our zigzag out. That's outlining our triangle here, here. Okay, comb this back. So team, the take this out. I can, I'm reading the haircut. I can see where it's at right there. So that tells me I'm gonna hair paint that because that's a big piece out. Or I can show you what I did to the front of that other one because it's the same exact haircut, but just shorter. Again, these cuts were done by Peter Gray. Thank you, Pete. Okay, so here is, I've over-directed it. Let me grab it because it's short hair. It's hard to get on that foil. Let me turn her just a tad bit more. All right, so I'm over-directing. I'm making sure that I, I create a lot of dimension in there because it's being over-directed into that triangle. We're having a lot of over-direction. That means that there's gonna be a lot of dimension. It's the fastest way to do a, a variation on the tips. So this is what's happening while I over-direct it into that triangle. Okay. Here. Please, can you repeat um, what bleach you're using for our viewers that just joined? I'm so sorry, say that again. Can you repeat what bleach you're using? This is the silver powder lightener from Color Space. And we're using 20 volume, uh, mix one to two. And the developer, what I love about this product is the um, shea butter that's in it, along with the lift that you get with this powder lightener is so beautiful. Okay, let me get this undone. Whoa. And then we do have a question about why are you taking weaves instead of slices? These are not, these are not weaves. These are like, a, okay, so let me, let me show you one more time. So we've taken big triangular sections. I'm outlining, I'm just scribbling out zigzags, combing them over, combing them over. So this is like probably three slices back to back. You can see how wide. Team, you can see how this is traveling to the center. These are traveling further into the center. So what's gonna happen is the hair that's traveling up is going to get more color deeper. The ones that are traveling further, think about hair cutting. If you were gonna cut this, the center would be shorter and the pieces that are traveling are gonna be longer. But when you color this way, the pieces in the center are gonna have more color and the pieces that are traveling to it are gonna have less. So what I'm doing with this, it looks like three slices back to back. That's how wide this is. We're gonna have a lot of dimension. It's gonna have a lot of variation. It kind of looks like Fur. It's the only way I could describe it. So that's what this is going to look like. It's going to look like lived in color. But what I did is I zigzagged around each of these because I'm going to hair paint deeper so that it's going to break up some of that. So this is how this is a great way of creating um, dimension on short hair. So team, this is what we did. So here you go. This is the last section. So I'm looking at the haircut. And I'm looking, I'm reading the haircut. I'm reading what Peter cut for me. And if you look, this looks where it goes flat into your hand. So I know that he stood here and he did this and because I can see where the cut is. I'm gonna go one inch below that so that you can see the tips. If you don't go one inch below where all that, see where I'm pulling that back? That's where all the point cutting starts. So I wanna go one inch below that right here. So that way we can see it. It's easier to go back and point cut all of this uh, if it gets too heavy versus coloring that and then it's not enough and you'll have to go back. So I want you to go forward. Now I want you to see what I'm doing. I have a triangle that's wider to skinny at top. I'm going to zigzag hair out in between that triangle because I want to have some hair to hair paint. 
Okay, let's take that out. And the reason why I'm going to hair paint is just to give it a little bit more dimension. Clip that out of the way. Now I'm going to take this hair, read the haircut, stand exactly where it's at. Let me clip it so it's going to hold it right where it was cut. If you clip it where it was cut, let it go. It's easier for you to work. Okay. So now I'm going to take this, drop it down. You can see where the line is and you can see where I can see right where the texture is right there. So I'm going to take that, that um, silver powder lightener right below that. Okay. I'll apply with my brush flat to the hair to make sure that I deliver enough product. And then I'll work it back and forth to make sure I've got really great saturation. All right. So this is the fringe area. So it's going to be pretty bold. Here we go. But then once when you see the images, when it's finished, you'll see how we're taking a big piece. It's pretty big, chunky piece, that word chunky. But what happens is because it's being all over directed, you're going to get variation in the finish. So this is a fast way of getting a lot of variation on a shortcut, not so much a pixie, but a shortcut. And it really depends on how the person cut the hair or how you cut the hair. All right, so let me stand here. Let me fold this. And this is the lock. We're going to put a lock on this so this foil doesn't slide around. So I just stick my pin tail, um, the teeth of the pin tail, and then roll that corner up. And that will stay. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of hair painting on those tiny pieces in between the foil. So this is fun. So you just got introduced to the um, silver powder lightener team. This is our um, freehand powder lightener. So this powder lightener is a gum base. This is what we hair paint, um, color space hair. This is the most amazing freehand powder lightener. It is not clay. It's a gum base. So I want Manuel, if you could get a shot of this. This is a gum base. This is a green gum based powder lightener. So I'm going to add, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to add to the um, liquid. So my developer is 30 volume. And if you look, look how green that is. It is so cool. It is a green gum based. Oh, right there. Here we go. It is a green gummy. So I can, actually I'm going to do it in the Unimix so that you guys can see how we mix our powder lighteners in the Unimix. If we could go back to the Unimix. Okay, so this plate is what helps um, the magnet hold on to the bowl. So let's watch. So if I drop, you can see how that really grabs the magnet. So it's, it's, it's got a lot of pull to this. So when we mix our color, we have a temperature button that brings the color to a body temp temperature and that actually helps with any type of allergies. When we mix our powder lighteners, we do not use that temperature button. All right, this is the button that we use. So this button is what is making that turn. And when we mix our powder lighteners, I lightly just drop them in. I'll split this up into three parts. And as it's mixing, I'll just push the powder down. And you can see the center of the magnet. What I'll do is I'll clean that off a little bit. Just let that start to mix. I give it time just to mix. So the benefits of a gum base, this is what's really interesting. A clay base is clay. And what it does is it, if you ever worked with clay, like even doing molds or um, statues or whatever, the things that you make with clay, you can find that it leaches moisture out of your hands. So clay can leach moisture out. What this does, it's a gum base. It encapsulates the moisture. So it, it has, it's very moisturizing and the green comes in handy. Just like our silver powder lightener has that silver tone to it, which helps control the unwanted natural remaining pigment. This green works out well for when you're doing hair painting, like think about when you're hair painting and the ends are really, really blonde. And when you start to hair paint at the top part, it may get to an orange yellow or if there's any orange left in the hair, green will take out red. So if you have orange, which is red and yellow, the green will help take that red out. So you'll have blonde. Some, this will help when you're glossing. You don't have to really think about using two glosses, one with blue 
to counter out the orange that's in the top part of the hair, you can go with one that just takes care of yellow. So this really helps control any orange that's in the hair. I love this one. And it is a hair painting product. So you can balayage, you can hair paint with this. And the texture is really nice. And it's creamier. So you don't have um, a lot of um, work to do when you're working. So with the clay, you're, you're really, really pulling that product through and working it and, and really working it hard. This one is creamier. So the texture and the movement is very different. So let's start with the back because I want to, I normally start with the front, but I want to work with pulling the hair back. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab these tiny pieces that are in between our foils. Let me take all of these out so that we can have some dimension happening in between the foils. Here we go. So again, I'm going to ask her to put her left ear to her left shoulder. Let's move this out of the way. And these pieces, again, it's what we did is we created another triangle. So taking that triangle on either side, taking those little zigzags out and taking little zigzags out, what I did, if you notice, I created another triangle. So I'm going to clip these a little bit closer to the root and do the same. But we're gonna use this hair painting product instead of the foil. And you can do whatever, whatever you wanna do. You can take it in a V shape. You can do individual pieces. This is us taking and creating more di dimension through that hair. So here we go. And this is a fun way of getting your clients with your short hair. Here, let me work off of this paddle there. Let me take it a little bit higher here. And again, you're creating more dimension. So this green cream hair painting, this is our freehand lift freehand powder lightener is so amazing. It's so pretty. And it lifts up to seven levels, not half levels, but full levels. I'm using 30 volume. I'm not really backing up too much because we have a lot of texture in there. So then we'll drop that down. Now we're going to take this piece and pull it back. So now I'm gonna to work towards the front. And again, we created another little triangle here. Let me put a clip at the root and you can see it's not as wide here. All right, so then I'll grab my paddle, grab my product. You can hold on to it or you can work on, I like to work on the paddle when it's this short. And again, I'm just taking little pieces and taking it deeper. Remember, the ones that are in front are just the tips, so I wanna get a little bit deeper. And this is where we're gonna create all that dimension. So these pictures, as soon as they're finished, I'll have them sent out and the team will post them so that you can see the final result. And then your charging is for, I would do for a full foil or a creative placement. You guys can do that as well. All right, so drop that down. Okay, take this clip out. Let's move this over. Okay, we're gonna have her turn. Again, we're gonna clip this up so we have control. Pick this up. Okay, and then we're gonna take these little guys here, make sure that they're laying flat. So a lot of times we'll do just foiling. I think foil and the freehand techniques are really fun to do. And you're introducing them into something that's more natural. And again, you can see I'm still giving her a rooty look. If she wanted to have a, um, something that was at her root, I would go through and place those first. Okay, I'll take this one back. Let me move this clip. And like so. And I'll do those little pieces right there by themselves. Clip this, keep it up from the root, let it stand up. And I don't know how much short hair everyone is doing in the salon just yet. I know that we have a lot of long hair lived in color that's happening. But this is a technique that you can introduce to any of your medium to short hairs. If you're, if you're changing anybody from a bob into some texture, this is a fun technique to do as well. 
Okay, so let's paint this through. Okay, so then that one is finished. Let me grab that clip, get it out of the way. All right, so then we'll take a tiny piece in through here. This I'll probably lay on the foil so I don't want it to get on her. Pull this out, pick up our product. All right. And I do like working with the board doing this on, on really short hair because it really helps me pull that product through. We really want to get that saturated. And it's mostly on our ends and you can see how I'm zigzagging right at the root. All right. Okay, I'll slide a foil under. Let me just foil that out of the way so she can read a magazine. Okay, and then let's keep going. So I'm gonna start now on the back and pulling everything back this way so she'll look aerodynamic. All right, here. We move all of these foils this way now. And we're working back. All right, here we go. Again, we made, oh, I'll grab those tiny pieces down there. Now we've made another triangle here. Let me clip that up at the root. So clipping this at the root team helps keep all that hair over directed. So that's where you get your over direction. All right, I read the haircut. Let me wipe my paddle off and then we'll do it again. Grab our product. So again, this is a gum base freehand powder lightener. Gives you up to seven actual levels of lift. It works really fast. It works up to 55 minutes. It's a gum base, not a clay base. So I wanna make sure that we get these straightened out right in here. I can see how some of these are kind of buckling up inside there. Let me grab those. Now I can paint. Let me grab some more product. Okay, pulling it out at a 90. And again, this is giving you more dimension because you're over directing it from the root. We usually go horizontal and start to over direct or diagonally and start to over direct. I want you to try it with short hair. You'll get a lot of dimension. Okay. You can see how it's not a straight line. All right, let's lay that over. Okay. Now we'll have our next one. And this is going deeper than what the foils are. All right. Again, we're going to clip at the root to give us that over direction. Here, ask her to tilt her chin down. Let me move this. All right, grab your paddle and you can stand behind. I'm standing in front only so that I can show you if I were doing this in the salon, I would definitely be behind her, pulling everything back. Okay, so making sure this is, pull this up at a 90 because you're painting. Make sure all of these little guys, once you get product on there, you can take your pin and start getting all the little knots out to make sure that when you're applying your product, it's really clean and it's well saturated. Pull it out at a 90. Because remember, you want to get all, you're over directing that hair on the inside. And again, I would be standing behind doing this, pulling it back. But with the cameras I'm showing you, I'm standing in front. So when you do this, please stand behind. It's easier on your body. Okay. So then take this clip out. Slide this off. I'm trying to slide the slide. Come on. Okay. And I'll continually wipe my paddle off as I'm working because I like it to be clean. Take these little clips out. If you see anything, because I'm working from the front, I want to make sure these are nice and blended. All right, take these. This will be our, 
I think our second to the last. So we'll move this one over here. This is how fast this technique is, team. All right, so I'll do this and this, and we are gonna process. So I will think I'm gonna have to work from the back because this is that front piece and it's so important. I don't know if we can get a really great shot of that. All right, so I did a 90. They're clipped. Let's get our product, add it to our board, lay it back onto the board. All right, now, again, make sure that it is really smooth inside there. It's almost like combing it with the pin tail. Okay, you wanna saturate. Uneven, make it uneven. Get these little pieces. You don't want it to be even. You want it to have a shadow at that root. All right, we have a question. What else would you use to keep the gum base lightener from bleeding into other sections if you don't want to use foils? Um, it actually doesn't. It is a, it, it's like a clay. It doesn't transfer. It's really cool. This does not transfer onto the other hair. It acts as a clay, but does not transfer. If you push down on it, um, just like a clay, if you over manipulate it, you might get some type of transfer, but normally you won't get any transfer with it. It's just like a regular clay. The difference is it's a gum base and it will, and you can see how, let me show you this. You can see how it gets dry, just like um, a clay. It gets dried just like a clay, but it, and it won't transfer, it's really cool. And I like how creamy it is. You don't have, it's, it's almost, I had to learn how to use a different movement. It's almost like a flicking um, loop type of a movement instead of a, a, a press up or a smooth up. It's more of a, it's a softer, you have to have a softer touch for this product. But I love how the hair feels and how soft it is. Super shiny. It's weird because you, it's sometimes the white, I found that the white clay when you're done and you're looking at it and you think that it's finished and you shampoo it and it's not done and then it, you still have yellow in it. It contributes to the end result. All right, let's see. Should we paint this one or should we tip it? I think we should tip it. Let's tip this one. Oh, let me add a little bit of something to this. No hair left behind. How about that? Boink. All right. So let's over direct this one with this clip. Ah, with this clip. All right. I'm going to do it with this powder light. I'm going to do it with this clay. So it's not meant to put in a foil, but you can isolate it like a foliage. So I think I'll go higher at the front and let's go lower at the ends. All right. And any other pieces that you see floating around, this is what you can do with this product is just grab it and just do a little paint onto it. All right, here, make sure it's saturated. So we'll just isolate it over. I'm not gonna fold it. I'm just gonna keep it and take this clip out. Take this clip out. All right, and there was a piece down here I wanted to grab right here. So this is our last piece, team, right here. So let's grab our product, load it up here. Yeah, you, you'll, you'll love the texture of this. And it does not transfer. That's what I like about it, okay? And you can see how easy it is to work through the hair. Let me create a little shape in there and we get some dimension. And this will be really light. This is the bottom of that triangle. So when I dry it, I'm gonna give it some flicks in here so you can see it. All right, team, this is the technique. Um, I, I call it the triangles. Lav um, was our model that we did for our shoot. I see a piece here I wanna grab too. Um, it works, it's all about over-directing. It's all about reading the haircut. The, the, the 
trick of reading the haircut is pull it out of at a 90 where the hair grows and you can see what angle that haircut was taken and then walk until it's flat in your fingers and then you know that's where you're going to clip it so clip it at that point and then just take start doing some wide triangles so that you can have um, over direction you're going to create over direction in all of your work all right so we are going to let this little lady process oh wait I found another one so we're gonna let her process and then what we're going to do is take pictures we'll post them online um, and then we'll make sure that you get to see the afters again we have one that is a fashion formula and we have 1.0 with zero ammonia free and five volume and then we have this um, commercial look that's done with both the silver and the freehand powder lightener. One is with 20 volume and the freehand powder lightener is done with 30 volume. So once they're finished, we'll do that. My name is Lupi Voss from Color Space Hair. Come visit us, colorspacehair.com and check us out. I appreciate your time and I'll see you guys later. Thank you.